Christ's hymnal, um, I'll hail the power of Jesus' name. And then let's just do the last verse. Oh, that with yonder sacred throng we at his feet may fall. We'll join the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all. We'll join the everlasting song and crown get to switch to the other uh, loose leaf praise book and we're going to do number 12 how great is our God the splendor of the king clothed in majesty let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, and trembles at his voice. How great is our God, sing with me how great is our God, and all will see how great. How great is our God, and age to age he stands, and time is in his hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end, the Godhead free in one, Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and And now Cameo is going to come back up and do our children's message. So if the kids that are here can come down and help Miss Cameo out. I'm glad we did have two other children arrive so that to make that 
so that you don't just have I to. I know. Well, th that way you don't have to talk to just the adults and pretend you're I talking know. to the children. Although sometimes. All right. Ooh. So we're going to do communion because it's World Communion Sunday. So when we do communion, sometimes it doesn't have to look the same, right? Do you remember during quarantine, we would do uh, communion at home? What are some things that we had as communion? Do you remember? I think we had goldfish one time or graham crackers and milk. And all across the world, they have different kinds of communion. There's not a right and there's not a wrong way. But the most important thing is that we remember when we're doing communion. So let's start with the bread. And our adults get to take communion in a little while, but I wanted the kids to get the opportunity. So when we take the bread, what is it that this represents? Do you guys remember? His body. That's right. It's his body that he gave for us so that he could save us. Okay, so let's go ahead and take the body. And I remember that we talk about when we get to take the juice, oh, it tastes so good, and we're thirsty. I want more, huh, always. But you know what? Sometimes it's important that we remember the reason why we take the bread and the cup. What, is the, what does the cup represent? Do you remember? His blood that he gave for us. So if we remember the story that he died on the cross for us, right? And he bled and died. It means that he saved us so that we could live with him in heaven. Can you go ahead and open yours? And because of that, we know that God saves us, right? All right, you can go ahead. And we say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much for your sacrifice. Even though the grape juice tastes so good, we're still so thankful for your sacrifice, right? All right. Let's have a prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you so much uh, for dying on the cross for us. We're so thankful that we get to celebrate with Christians all across the world to get to celebrate in World Communion Sunday. And we're so grateful that these children get to know the reason that we do communion. We love you so much and help us to have a great week and great be a great light to those around us. And we love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you can go throw your trash away and go sit back down. So my instructions from Canaan for the scripture reading, our first scripture reading, was that since we have a pinch hitter to give us our message today, and she has chosen a different scripture lesson, um, he would like us to do the scripture reading from Hebrews. Um, so this is Hebrews 1, um, verses 1 through 4, and you can follow along in your pew Bibles on page New 218 of the New Testament. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, 
whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he made a purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. This is the word of the Lord. And now it's time um, for our hymn to prepare our hearts uh, for prayer. And this is again out of the praise song, the loose leaf. Um, we're gonna, it's gonna be number 32 in the secret. secret in the quiet place in the stillness you are there in the secret in the quiet hour I wait only for you cause I want to Sing onward, pushing every hindrance aside, out of my way, cause I want to Good morning. Uh, it's like Margie says, when the pastor calls and says, will you lead the prayer, the pastoral prayer? I said, yes, sir, I will. <laughs> so, so here I am. Anyway, we are way, way thankful for Margie's return to us. That's wonderful. But we're also saddened by uh, our little sister Eden's sickness. And so we will primarily pray for her, but um, let's each one of us 
Instead of me mentioning names, why don't we each one in our own hearts and minds pray for someone that's in our heart? And uh, <clears throat> so I say, pray with me, please. Oh, great and loving Father, Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus, we come before you this morning, Lord. So thankful, Lord, for so many, many, many wonderful blessings, including allowing Margie to be with, here with us today. And I, Lord, we thank you for these beautiful days and for the life, just to have a, to be alive and be here today and to have had transportation to be here, to have food to eat and clothes to wear, all of these things, Lord, that we so take for granted. Help us to be forever and forever grateful every day, every morning, to get up and rejoice in the gifts you've given us. And I pray, Lord, especially for Eden and uh, for her family. You know, Lord, she's a very special little girl, and we all love her very much, and it saddens our hearts to know that she's ill. But, Lord, we have the faith and the belief and the knowledge and the and I know your grace that you will take care of her. And she is in your care and keeping. And you'll do more for her than any amount of humans, any sort of medical treatment could do for her, Lord. And we pray for all of those, Lord, that are in our hearts today, the ones that are so dear. That um, And we know, Lord, that your love and your grace and your your healing and forgiveness can be spread all over the world to every one of those people that we have in our hearts today. Now I pray, Lord, for us to continue on in this service. Help us to conduct ourselves in a manner that is pleasing to you, Lord. May our songs and our prayers be a joy to your ears and to your heart. And I ask you these things, Lord, in the name of Jesus through the workings of the Holy Spirit, and to pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. And, and in the heavens, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. So uh, Patty Gill has graciously agreed to present um, the, the message this morning. And the scripture that she wants to speak from is in Romans chapter 8, verses 18 and 19. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. Um, so, Patty, we're so happy that uh, you said yes when Pastor Kanan called you and said, oh, wouldn't you like to, get, to give a message tomorrow? So thank you, Patty. <laughs> thank you very much. Hi, I'm Patty. I'm used to saying I'm Patty, I'm an alcoholic, so think nothing of it if I kind of go back and forth on that. Uh, the only talks I usually give is about alcoholism and what God has done for me in my sobriety. Um, I was a periodic drinker, and uh, that meant I only drank at certain times. The, something bad would happen, I'd stop drinking uh, for a period of time. And I had four or five years that I didn't drink, and that was by saying an Our Father every night. I knew nothing about alcoholism, but it's amazing the power of prayer, because that prayer helped me not to drink for almost five years. I moved up to Breckenridge and they uh, put me on high blood pressure uh, Valiums because I had intermittent high blood pressure. And if, if you're a recovering person from alcohol and had addictions like I did, Valium is not a good drug for uh, alcoholics. 
and in a month and a half or two months, I was back drinking after almost four or five years of not drinking. Uh, I stayed there a while. I was very, I was very suicidal. I don't say this to scare people. It's just what, what alcohol took me. I was very suicidal. I was pretty crazy all the time. Those periods of sobriety got shorter and shorter and shorter. And I moved, went back to Chicago for a bit, and then I came back here. And I was in a bar one night, and somebody says, where do you live? And I said, well, I live at 13th and York. Oh, right on the corner from Alcoholics Anonymous? Well, that's, I didn't know for sure what Alcoholics Anonymous was, but uh, I remember parking alongside this building and thinking, what a beautiful building, and all these people are in it having a good time. So you have to be careful what you ask, because you never know what answer might come, you know? So I, um, I'm in this bar, and this lady said this to me, and she didn't say to me, have you been there or you belong there, which I should have been, and I, the answer should have been yes, but uh, that wasn't the case. Well, it was either that night or a few nights later that I screamed out for God to help me, and I got up in the morning, and he showed me my alcoholism like I was watching a movie, and it was the first time in my life that I really realized that I had an alcoholic problem, and, um, and that was praying to Christ is who I screamed out to. I know it's kind of funny, but I was raised Catholic, so we have pictures and we have a lot of different symbols. And I had this picture of uh, Veronica's veil, which is um, a picture of Christ where Veronica supposedly went up and, and put this cloth on Christ and his face was imprinted on this cloth. It was a beautiful piece. piece. My, aunt, my mother, grandmother got it from Rome, actually. And I, ha I took it with me when I moved to Colorado and everything, and, and I was looking right at that when I screamed out for God to help me. Well, I lived five doors away from York Street Club a month and a half before I knew I had a problem. No other power could have done that. I had no doubt that God did that. So I did a really safe thing. I drove down there from five doors away. I thought I'd have a quick getaway, <laughs> you know. I had no idea what this place was. It said 1311 York Street. And I'm thinking, okay. So I walk in and I said, what is this place? And they said, it's Alcoholics Anonymous. And I said, okay, and are there any women? I never asked for women at that time in my life, but I said, are there any women around? And there wasn't. So they took, they took me in this little cafe and a couple of men talked to me and they talked to me about alcohol. And for the first time in my life, I had hope to what was wrong with me. And, it, and they said, I never had a drink again a day at a time. And I believed them. And by the grace of God, I have 45 years of sobriety last April. And, and kind of, I'm kind of impressed with what God gave me too, you know. I know you're looking at me and you're thinking, oh, she can't be that old. Well, I was really 10 years old. I just looked older than I was, you know. So. But um, I can't even begin to tell you all the grace and all the love that God uh, has given me. There's, there's a scripture that is farther on in, in Romans that talks about nothing, nothing can separate you from the love of God. Addictions, sin, devils, angels, success, failure, nothing will separate you from the love of God. He was working in my life in spite of me. I didn't even ask. Everything was all in place as soon as I asked for help. It was all there. I also believe that nothing happens by mistake. You know, that God's in charge of all of it. I obviously, no mistake to move five doors away from York Street Club. You know, that was no mistake. And I've been there ever since. And it's kind of, the steps of alcohol, some people look at AA as a cult. Well, that's not true. It's all about God. Alcoholics Anonymous is all about finding God. It, it takes a while. And it's kind of good that we don't talk that much about Jesus Christ when we first come in. Because it would scare a lot of people off. So you want them to get some kind of sobriety and a base to their sobriety, and you pray that they can start to see God in it all. But it's all, he's through it all, every bit of it. Canaan talks about that. You know? and, and also, uh, these steps work. You have to work. They work in, there's 400 different organizations that use the 12 Steps of Alcoholics Anonymous. And it works, and it's successful, because it's all about God. And it's all about finding God. Um, I have had many different times in my sobriety, ups, downs, you know, tragedy, happy things, whatever, but I never had a drink again. I believed that when they told me I never had a drink, drug, or hurt myself again. And whatever's going on, I have a mental defense, and that's God Almighty. 
and he's given me so much I can't even begin to tell you what has happened in 45 years. With this York Street Club th that I sobered up at, I work at today, I manage. So I don't know if that's healthy or not, <laughs> but, but I do. I manage York Street Club, and I've been a manager there for about eight years. It's kind of interesting, and I still drive down there from a block and a half away. So some things never change, you know. But uh, God is, and I know that's exactly where I'm supposed to be. I've had many different jobs in my sobriety, and this is probably one of the, the most, probably fulfilling in some ways. It's not always a great job because you have a lot of different, you know, we get mental illness, we have a lot of problems that happen, you know, within alcoholism that is reflected on that club. But it survives, it's still here because God works it out, always works it out. I sometimes worry about staff once in a while or something, and I go, it's so stupid, Patty, what are you doing that for? He always covers everything. We were closed only for a month and a half, and uh, we didn't have a lot of activity other times, though, until somewhat recently. But I was there every day because I felt that that place couldn't be left alone. If anybody ever gets an opportunity, it's a huge Victorian house on the corner of 13th and York. And AA bought it uh, in 1948 for $25,000. Well, the traditions of AA came out, and they said you can't own property. So then it became 1311 York Street Club, Inc. And I've been there since 76. Whoever thought, you know? I mean, it's just amazing. I, I can't even cons express to you what 45 years of sobriety, I, I can't even express the feeling that goes on inside of me to even be able to say that. Uh, it's a year sobriety, a day sobriety. It's the same thing. How do you get that? If you're an alcoholic like I was, how do you get that? You get it through God, you know, a day at a time. And and I am immensely grateful. I kind of have run out of things to say. But I just need to let you know that nothing separates you from the love of God, nothing. And if you have an addiction or a problem, we have a lot of different addictions. I have chocolate now, but, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't get a DUI, thank you, God, and things like that. But um, God can heal you. God can heal you. So I want to share a little story because it's kind of funny how things happen. I fell down about six to eight cement steps about four months ago, and I'm and I'm laying at the bot uh, where I live, and I'm laying at the sidewalk, and this kid comes walking down the stairs, and he looks at me laying on the sidewalk, and he says, oh, have a nice day. And I'm looking at this kid. I mean, I'm kind of raising my head looking at him and thinking, oh, my God, what do I do now? Well, it turned out somebody else came, and and caught an ambulance and that was it. But what it taught me, this is a lesson it taught me, is when we're in the self, we don't notice accidents around us and tragedies that might be happening. So that's been my new prayer lately, is please let me pay attention to what's going on around me. And I am honored to be here today, and I'm honored to give God the praise because he's the one that deserves it. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Patty. Um, I think uh, based on that, it's really appropriate that our, uh, our song in, in response to the message um, out of the praise hymnal, is, or it's a praise book, is Friend of God, because we all are friends of God. Friend of God, I am a friend of God. 
I think Jim Gray is coming up now to give us our offertory thought. And the kids are going to follow Miss Cameo out for their program. Thank you, Margie. Um, Shannon didn't uh, call me like he called the others. He just texted me and said, do it. So um, here I am. Um, I want to do a couple of things. Uh, before we talk a little bit about the offering and the giving time, which we do every Sunday, I just want to remind everybody that coming up, we're going into a period of stewardship. And uh, you're going to hear during this time of the various needs of the church and ways that you can give and support. Um, we do have some real challenges coming up. Uh, many of you know, and maybe not all, so uh, this may be news to you, but we did get support from the PPP loan program uh, in uh, 2020 and 2021. And it was a godsend because we were able to keep our church fully staffed, pay everybody their salaries, and uh, put them to work. And I think that some of them worked even harder uh, in this remote uh, worship period than they did when they were here in person because there was a lot of technology things going on. But we won't have that, um, obviously, next year. Uh, we do have a... Uh, wonderful thing happened with the church is we have partnered with um, an after-school program. I think it's called Options. And we have uh, over 200 kids here every week. Um, they are getting connected with the church through this program, through some of Cameo's work with the youth um, and some of the programs that she has, after-school programs. Um, and uh, parents are also getting to know our church. Uh, we're doing this because uh, it's a great program for these homeschooled children, and it's a, it's a great asset to the church for the income that they do provide us for the space that they use. Uh, if anybody joins our church, that's wonderful, but that is not our goal. Um, that would be a consequence, a good consequence. So, um, the needs of the church facility obviously are great, and the uh, payroll has expanded somewhat um, with some additional people, technology and maintenance and so forth. So uh, I would hope that over these next few weeks you give serious thought as to how you can support the church regularly. Uh, as an example, I use Givelify, and every the 15th of every month, it automatically sends my payment, my contribution, to the church. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to remember it. I don't even have to worry about getting to church to pay it. I can sit at home and, and do my part, at least financially. So, uh, as I said, it's a stewardship time coming up, and I'm sure there will be more information coming to you. Uh, and uh, just prayerfully think about how you can support this church not only financially, but with your time and talents. So now we have an opportunity to give of our gifts today. And of course, we don't pass the plate. There are giving boxes, one on the back wall here on the right as you go out the door, and then one on the wall on the right as you go into the narthex. It's usually where the food is spread out and so forth. So I'll put your gifts in there, and they will get... Uh, accounted for and you will be accounted for uh, so um, I think we should now have a prayer and uh, I'm sorry we should have the doxology and after the doxology we will have a prayer praise God from whom all blessings flow Creatures here below, praise God above the heavenly host, praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. 
Father in heaven, we glorify you with our praise and giving a portion of our treasure to the church for your glory. Help us to use these gifts to better honor you and do your work here in our community and around the world. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm uh, kind of like Jim. I got texted but came to. Of course, I volunteered. I said, if you want, whatever you want me to do, so I'm supposed to be doing the uh, communion meditation, the elder prayer, and the words of institution, the whole thing. So I hope I don't bore you. But um, with the daily exposure that we have, uh, the uh, negative and disturbing information, fortunately, we can escape from all that attacks through Jesus Christ and this table of grace. I'm here today to invite all those here and around the world to join us as one in the communion meal. This is the gift of God for the people of God. Thank you. Our communion hymn today is from the, uh, the praise so song book again. We're going to do number 90, Cornerstone. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, he is Lord, Lord of all. When darkness seems to hide his face, changing grace in every high and stormy gale my anchor holds within the veil my anchor holds within the veil Christ alone cornerstone weak made strong in the Savior's love through the storm he When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless stand before the throne, faultless stand before the throne, Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. Please pray with me. Gracious and loving God, we have to thank you every day for the beautiful planet and the place that we live here in Colorado. And thank you again for a wonderful, beautiful autumn day. And thank you again for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ. We follow the path and the teachings of Jesus. 
we'll be all right. Everything will work out fine. And we have this table behind me to strengthen us in our resolve. We have the loaf of Jesus' broken body that gives us the strength, and we also have a chance to drink with the new covenant in Jesus' blood. We all do that every week. Please join me and enjoy the uh, meditative interlude from Christine before we have communion. said, this is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he took the cup, and after blessing it, he said, this is the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. These are the gifts of God to the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Bob. Um, and now, I forgot to ask you to stand up at the beginning, so I'll try to remember to say, stand if you're able, as we sing our closing hymn today. Um, you know, we, we learn a new hymn or a new song each month, and so since it's the first Sunday of October, it's time to learn a new song. So this is out of the regular hymnal, and it's number 117, He is Lord. So please stand as you're able. I wanted to take um, just a, another minute. I think Cameo forgot to mention it when she was doing the, the announcements this morning, but thanks to Charlene uh, Lauderdale for the beautiful flowers today in memory of her grandmother. And they were beautiful and we got a chance to enjoy uh, and really enjoy them. So pray with me now. Thank you, Lord, for this time to worship together. Be with us now as we go out this week to continue to love and serve you in all we say and do. Amen. We made it! Woo!